I'm going to be my own drum. Boom, 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 boom. Thank you, Amika J, for the soundtrack. We appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so thank y'all so much for being here. We are Real Women, Real Talk, and this is episode 14. Yeah. We are on our way. Thank y'all so much for joining us. I am Trenace Richardson. I'm the founder of Real Women. And who are you, sister? I am the illustrious Siobhan Carter, one of the facilitators for Real Women. Yes, you are. And in this space, Real Women, Real Talk, we have an opportunity to provide you a safe space so that you can hear some real talk, because that's all we got to give you is real talk. <laughs> we, we've been having a blast with it, and we're going to keep it going. But it's also an opportunity for you to get a sneak peek into what it's like to be a part of a Real Women Sister Circle. And so we invite you to go to our website, realwomenrock.org. We are a nonprofit, 501c3, and we exist to create safe spaces for women um, through sister circles, and we do them live and in person. And we're extending a virtual sister circle to you right now. And we have a lot to talk about, sister. How you doing over there? I'm good. good. Well, I want to say for those listening, Happy New Year. Happy oh. New Year. <laughs> we have Happy just New embarked Year. on 2024. Yes. So exciting. That is, I love the new year. Like it just brings a fresh start, new beginnings. So it's, it's always a great time. So I feel good. I feel inspired. I feel motivated. All the things. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'll say it does those things for me and maybe not, but, and because I'm so reflective, like we did that last episode, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so reflective at the end of a year. And we're going to talk about this, but there's a little bit of, I don't know what to call it. I don't know whether it's um, excitement or a little bit of anxiety about what am I going to do with this year, right? So, <laughs> like almost like the pressure is on to plan or you know, so we're, we're going to dig into it, but I think there's a little bit of that in me as well. Like, exactly. what am I going to do with this year? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do, I keep a little bit of that on me, just that type A stuff going on. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yep. Yes. Makes so sense. I got a little of that. <laughs> okay. Got you. Yeah. But other than that, it's good. I'm feeling really good about, um, just being, shoot, I'm going to be real old school, being in the land of the living. I'm know, just grateful right. to be here because um, if this podcast made it to you, we're here. Hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We made it. So, um, so I really do, in this new year, before we just jump into like what we envision for this new year or even you know how we go through that process mm -hmm. is there anything from this past year going into the new year that if you had to say I want to give this as a gift to somebody I want to share it with them um something you've watched or listened to or read is there anything that you would gift someone and say this is worth you knowing about Ooh, honey, okay, now I'm, this might turn into a deep dive, but oh, go ahead, girl. I love it. Turn it. I okay, turn it. so I just attended a live or a, a, an event through live stream on okay. YouTube um, that was hosted at Bus Boys and Poets, um, and the event was called Single at Heart, mm. and it was a conversation between Dr. Bella De Paolo. Mm -hmm. who is now a 70 year old woman she's been doing this work talking about single at heart for a number a, a number of years mm -hmm. um, at least over 20 years and she wrote a book and it's called single at heart and it's basically just encouraging those who feel like they are called to singleness um, to encourage them like you can have a good life like you can thrive and it doesn't have to be woe is me you don't have to give in to 
the um the the stigma that's associated with people being single that you're just gonna be lonely and gonna die alone and just you won't be happy and all of those things and all of this um societal messaging and co social conditioning that we have that you have to be married you have to be in a relationship so just listening to that live event spoke so much to my soul mm -hmm. um, because I am in a space of just desiring to curate and create the type of life I want outside of a relationship and not having to worry about that level of compromise and mm -hmm. sacrifice. And so I just felt like, man, these women, because it was three ladies on the panel. Uh, one was an African-American woman. Um, her name was Dr. Chris Marsh. Mm -hmm. And she's also um, single at heart. And she wrote a book called Love Jones, which I had to order mm -hmm. that on Amazon. But it's just talking about, you know, a single uh, from the, the um, African-American perspective. So I, I would offer that to anyone who has been struggling with singleness, who, who desires to just be in that state, but feel pressured by, you know, society or by family members or loved ones to check out um, that live stream on YouTube or just to, to look at um, the book, look up the book, Single at Heart by Dr. Bella DePaolo. Nice. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> that's a whole <laughs> word because I am certain that mm -hmm. someone is listening who is walking into 2024 mm -hmm. single, yeah. either you know, been single for a while or maybe even newly single because of some relationship breakup and isn't feeling the best about their single status mm -hmm. and would need or want that type of resource. So I'm so grateful that you shared and that it spoke to you so strongly that you would want someone else to experience it. So yeah, rewind y'all if you need to. <laughs> Yep. Make sure you get that or share it with someone who might need it. That's mm -hmm. good. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yep. we could dive deeper. We may even end up somewhere back yeah, to it. So can we do the deep dive? Yeah. And you know what? I was trying to think of some, you know, wonderful resource. I was really just thinking of all the things that I listen to and I read and um and I watch. And I, I even shared in the last episode about something that I've seen on Netflix recently about evolution. So mm -hmm. I would just the evolution of the planet, not not the whole scientific versus Christian evolution. Mm -hmm. um, but it was it was really good. But in trying to think of in this moment, what I would recommend. Oh, my gosh. The most effective tool for me that I would share with someone lately. Oh. Mm. has been to find on YouTube or on the Peloton app or on the Calm app meditation music mm. that calms me down enough to either relax or go to sleep. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Because I am such an active being. Yes. And I know most of us are mm -hmm. that even when it's time for me to slow down and mm -hmm. rest, my mind is still going a mile a minute mm -hmm. and it will not slow down just because I tell it to. It does not. <laughs> it does not. I'm saying we're going to sleep now. Yeah. <laughs> it remembers my mind. She she remembers all of the things yeah. that. I, that I need to get done. Mm -hmm. and I mean, she brings them all up. You know, you didn't, you know, you didn't. And we got to remember and all the things she just keeps talking. Yeah. And so I have had to find tools that help slow my mind down mm -hmm. and quiet her <laughs> to the point where she can go to sleep. Yeah. So, so I can go to sleep. <laughs> so we can go to sleep. Um, it has been so important to me. And yeah. so I have found music that has, you know, a certain frequency of hertz to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I have found just, and some music does not do it for me. It's too, I don't need words with it. Mm -hmm. um, I need it instrumental, but even some tones and they're too loud or they disrupt yeah. my, you know, I need it to calm me all the way down. 
Mm-hmm. The last thing I'll say is I do have the Peloton app and some of those meditations are calming enough that they are voices, but they have um, their, you know, they're relaxing or sleep meditation and they instruct you. So yeah. relax your legs or mm-hmm. relax your knees or breathe deeply. And so all of those things have yeah. been so helpful. <laughs> you how I can identify with that. Like recently I listened to one because I'll just go on YouTube and I'll type in meditation music for whatever I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I needed one because I was just feeling really anxious. And like you said, my thoughts were just racing. Mm -hmm. So I put in, you know, meditation music for anxiety and, and one came up that dealt with chakras. Mm-hmm. And so I listened to that and it, it music is powerful and it is so mm-hmm. healing. And so it really just helped to calm me down and mm-hmm. just minister to my different chakras. And mm-hmm. it, it was just amazing. But it just made me think about how powerful that music is, you know, mm-hmm. when you select the right one. Like you said, they have different ones with if you want to just listen to different frequencies and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I highly recommend that too because it has really helped me and the guided meditations, like you said. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I'll just add to that to help someone because the way that I posed this was what's worth sharing, right? So I I am offering it as a gift to someone who has a busy mind that doesn't allow them to rest. I really think it's helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to offer, even if you find one that looks too new age-ish for you or too <laughs> new age. <laughs> Siobhan just brought up the word chakra. You're like, oh my oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. So I just, I want to offer that all things have energetic vibration and frequency. All, and we don't have an issue with that when it comes right. to our phones. Right. Because it takes some kind of wave that some kind of vibrational wave that we can't see for us to hear somebody who lives on the other side of the world or the country or the state or the city in yes. order for them to hear us, hear them on our phones. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have any problems with that. The fact that we can virtually talk to each other, like there, there are so many energetic waves happening to make things uh, to make us communicate in these through these waves. And and my point about that is if you can trust that, (laughs) which is which is man made, then you have to know that I know that God is big enough (laughs) to have created all that we see that is living and breathing and and plants that are taking in um, oxygen and, and letting out carbon dioxide and and I mean, all of the ways in which we need all of these things and it, it all works together. It is all energy. All yes. of it is energy. Absolutely. And as a result of that, we have got to understand. And I, I may have said one of those backward, but y'all get what I'm saying. Exactly. Um, my, my point about that is if we can trust that there is energy happening, mm-hmm. that there energy exists around us, in us. Um, between us, then just know that there is calming energy mm-hmm. and there is energy that can make you anxious and excited and, and get you going. That's why certain music will get you going. Hey, 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 and you have some, some music they play causes riots, like yes. literal riots. Yes. So allow this music that you think is is new age allow this music to rest your mind, baby? Because it does work. <laughs> it works. Let it rest your mind. Just try it. I yeah. promise you won't. You won't be. You won't nothing to happen if you don't right. like it. Just, just try it. Right. You're not being ushered into a demonic space. It's okay. Oh Lord, let me in some stuff. You don't listen. Don't nothing come over here unless I allow it. That's what I'm nothing. Right. Don't come to me. Right, no. I got control of what come over here. Anyway, yes. we, could, we could stay there. I'm sure that's going to be coming up as an episode <laughs> one day. So. We keep, we keep, you know, talking about yeah, touching it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
That was a lot of real talk, sister. What yeah. in the world? <laughs> I'm going to get a little deep. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. Okay. So um, we we were in the water already. We were really yeah. in the water. But let's yeah. just go a little bit deeper mm-hmm. because we talked last episode about 2023. Yeah. And just what our reflections were on the year. And I think we are like-minded in we take these benchmark milestone moments very seriously. Mm -hmm. end of a year, beginning of a new year. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to be honest with you. One of the most meaningful sister circles um, that I was a part of, um, you and one of our lead facilitators, Nefertiri McBride, when you all were leading the Prince George's County, Maryland sister circle, Mm -hmm. you may have been co-leading it. I can't remember, but um, you got us all the way together as it related to how to approach um, moving into a new year. And it was just a gift that you offered and whether we decided to receive it or not was up to us, Mm -hmm. but it was the difference between setting these goals and resolutions and, you know, objectives and and what we're going to do and when we're going to meet it by and how much we're going to lose and you know how much money we're going to earn and that kind of thing versus setting intention. Yeah. And I thought I would ask you to talk about that a little bit, um, both maybe giving some explanation about the difference between the two for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then, you know, delving into what your intention is for the new year. Yeah. So when I think about New Year's resolutions, I think task oriented. I think about, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to exercise. I want to eat better. I want to start a business. Like to me, those are tasks um, that you have to check the box on. And for me, I noticed how when I was doing that, I did not... Um, stick to it. There was no commitment and, and, you know, discipline associated with it. And then I would feel bad for not meeting my resolutions. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember where I heard a message talking about intentions. I'm not sure, but it really resonated with me um, when they talked about setting intentions, like not Mm -hmm. what you want to do, but who do you want to be? Mm. here. And so that spoke to me deeply because I am um, an intrinsic type motivator. Like I have to feel something deeply and it moves me forward. So Mm. for me, setting intentions felt more um, in alignment with how I'm wired. So that led me to just thinking about like, well, what is my one word? Who do I desire to be? you know, mm-hmm. in the new year. And I saw how I always came back to that or checked in with myself or it materialized when I said, this is what, you know, who I want to be. And that mm-hmm. carried me throughout the year. So I saw how, you know, effective it was for me. So, you know, just offering that in the circle that day, just a different perspective for some people. It's like, no, I need a resolution so I can check off the box and it's and it's great. And that if that works for you, go forward and do that. And and I just wanted to offer another perspective. Yeah. Before you share yours specifically, I just want to echo that that helped me so much because I am a box checker. Mm. Um, I have to do lists for my to do lists. Mm-hmm. And so it what I've noticed is it is. Oh, this is such a heavy word, but it's the only one that comes to mind. It is almost demoralizing for me Mm. to not have boxes checked. So I think many of us, you know, the joke is that you, you know, the gym is filled January 1 of people Mm -hmm. who are starting their exercise journey. And by February or March, it's empty again. Exactly. (laughs) So there there are many of us who are all or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Where if we don't if we don't get the specific thing that we said we were going to get done, yeah. the specific amount of pounds or the, you know, that mm-hmm. thing done, then it's like to hell with all of it. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, 
the difference between that and setting an intention to be mm -hmm. instead of me saying I'm going to lose 20 pounds by such and such date, I'm mm -hmm. going to be a healthier person. Yeah. I am going to live as a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, that sets me up, not, not just for what I'm going to do, but for who I am. Yeah. And it will direct my actions without setting me up for a lot of disappointment. That's what it yeah. speaks to for me. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so it resonated with me a lot because it kind of freed me up from the bondage of what right. I to do list. <laughs> right. Exactly. And it's yeah. so funny because I am so resistant to to do lists. Like I make mm -hmm. some sometimes, but I'm just so resistant to plans, mm -hmm. uh, like detailed plans. I make plans, but detailed plans, it's like okay. Right. Oh my God, I feel so restricted. So right, right, right. setting an intention and just choosing who I want to be opens me up to possibilities and different ways of being that, you know? Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so with that in mind, <laughs> thank you for that clarification. It really helped me then. Hopefully mm -hmm. it helps someone now maybe yeah. offer it as a gift and if that works for you, that it doesn't have to be a resolution. You could just set an intention. Mm -hmm. What is your intention for 2024? Yeah, so I'm excited because my intention for 2024 is to be the free spirit that I feel myself evolving into. Mm -hmm. So free spirit, that's my word. Um, mm -hmm. Starting off the year that way and... Mm -hmm how I desire to um, be in 2024. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that's going to look like, but I am flowing with, with that. And it's so funny because I was thinking about how we just recently went to um, a so Wealth uh, Mastermind with Dr. Mm -hmm. Johnson in Florida. And one of the things when she asked us to go around the room and talk about like, what's our word? Um, and, and where we are and what we're looking to get out of the weekend and just our lives, what I said was alignment, to have mm -hmm. all parts of me to be in alignment. And when I look at, you know, ending a year, starting a new year, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I put it out there and it's like, all right, well, let's get to... <laughs> Let's get, in let's get information you know? in. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it feels like. So I am just excited about being in alignment and flowing freely into who I am. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Um, free spirit. And you are aligning yourself into, into mm -hmm. what that is. And the being of that will permeate through everything that you do. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, if I had to share, um, and I love coupling this kind of with our last episode because what sets me up for uh, the intention for the new year, a part of it is reflecting on where I've been, mm -hmm. and um, my word or intention for this year has been my word previously, but not last year. Okay. Like la last year, I did not focus on this word hmm. the way that I have in previous years. Okay. And I can honestly say that I did not experience the being and the fullness of this word last year hmm. the way that I did in previous years Okay. when I did not consciously make it my word. And this is crazy because I'm, you know, I'm into all of this while I'm talking. Right, I'm like, um, what's this word? What's this word? Girl. Um, and it, you know, almost every, I'm doing all of this um, preface, but almost every in-person real women circle, especially before COVID, because mm -hmm. we were just regularly meeting, all of our circles were, were mm -hmm. blowing up and meeting. 
we almost always started the year with like one word or an intention. You know, we were always doing that, writing our words out and holding yeah. them up and all that. Mm -hmm. And so it's been my one word for a lot of years and I just embraced it and I was mm -hmm. able to literally walk in it. But it wasn't last year. The word is abundance. Mm -hmm. the word okay. Is abundance. Okay. And I would not, and I did not last episode, I did not describe my 2023 as abundance. I yeah. said that, you know, I would describe it as selfish, yeah. which was a, you know, it was what I needed. I needed to be intrinsically focused. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was an internal focus on me. Um, but this year moving forward, I want uh, and I will, and I am embracing ab abundance mm -hmm. all over again, um, mm -hmm. that there is nothing. This is how I've said it in the past. Mm -hmm. And I'm fully, I am reminding myself yeah, and remembering, bring, coming back to myself mm -hmm. related to the word abundance mm. because my truth is the only limitations I have are the ones I place on myself. Mm, that's real. I am abundant in every way, yeah. in every area. Mm -hmm. And my only ceilings mm. and my only boundaries, my only limitations are the ones that are self-imposed. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And so I'm going to sit in that real good yeah. and be all that abundance is this mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. and watch it work. Like, yeah. watch it work. That's what I'm excited about. Um, I think I needed, there was a healing. And, and, and I would say, you know, because I'm aware of, the areas of healing in my life, I would mm -hmm. say it's more continual. Mm -hmm. um, but I needed this year to come to terms with some of that and and bring me back. And And I will say, I think for many of us, COVID, that whole pandemic season yeah. just shifted a lot. It did. Um, it, it shifted a lot for me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, um, so being able to kind of come out of that and be out here mm -hmm. um, again in a very big and luminous way. Yeah. Um, I think that's where I am. So I'm excited about that. You know what it makes me think about when you said that you have been putting limitations and the mm -hmm. only thing that's in the way is just the ceiling that you um, mm -hmm. you create for yourself. It, it, it leads to me to thinking about there's so much power in choice. Mm, mm. Like just as much as you didn't walk in that abundance last year, mm -hmm. it's, you can just as much walk in that abundance, you know, this year because yeah. you say so, because you choose to do that. And it's just so empowering, you know, to know mm. that we get to choose. We yes. can raise the ceiling or we can lower it, but we have the power to do that. Yeah. And the moment that we choose, mm -hmm. the moment that we decide that and shift our focus mm -hmm. and our intention there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things begin to happen. Absolutely. Things begin to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a so, that's a powerful thing when we sh when we put our intention and focus onto it, mm -hmm. we we act as if it's already happened, mm -hmm. and Ooh. so then it comes, it happens. <laughs> Let me so you know, the example that came to mind while you were talking was, you know, we are both in lit rooms, yes. right? Uh -huh. So light is everywhere in the room, mm -hmm. right? But if we took all of the light that's in the room mm -hmm. and just condensed it and focused it all in one place mm. wherever that light was focused it would sear a hole into yeah. whatever that was it would yeah. burn up whatever that thing was if we took all of the light energy from the room and just yeah. focused it in one small place yeah because that laser focus mm. Mm -hmm. is so powerful 
Mm. And so I, and I can clearly say with that analogy that, um, I needed to explore all of what was going on, even in me. Yeah. I needed to explore all of it Mm -hmm. and figure out where to focus. Mm, Got it. So, yeah. So it is, yeah, it is abundance. I'm, I'm excited about that. And, And go ahead, go ahead. You got something? No, it just made me think about when you said you had to explore because a lot of times that's what we need to do to figure out where to where to go. We don't always mm-hmm. know where. So we're just figuring it out. We're getting curious. We're we're just seeing. And then it's like, OK, I see, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. curiosity. Mm-hmm. I think we said this in a previous episode. Curiosity breeds creativity and yes. creativity is when you begin to create something yes. literally yes. so it's exciting to to move into the space of exploration it's yes. scary yes. for some people for sure. but um but on the other side of that type of fear is something wonderful so yeah, yeah. 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 so i'm excited about that and yeah. I, I mean i will even say um that for, related to real women Mm-hmm. Um, that's one place where in my life, because, you know, I am real women, we yes. are real women, you know, we yes. feel it. Um, we, we have experienced so much of the power of real women that we identify as it. And so I, I experienced real women going through the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. So us not being able to meet in person during that time for a while, mm-hmm. and then us coming back to each other slowly, uh, both virtually and 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 now for a while now in person. Mm-hmm. And in that same way, it's sort of aligned with my life, right? So in the same way that we've been working on figuring it out, we are in this new year of 2024 focused yes. on growing these circles. Yes. Um, and so Woo. in 2024, um, the abundance of what real women is, is just sprouting and growing also because, you know, we are in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, sort of that's our nucleus Um We've got circles um, in in Southern Maryland. I'm not going to name them all here. Go to the website, Mm -hmm. realwomenrock.org. But we are growing beyond that. We're in Hampton Roads, Virginia. But we are growing to the Annapolis area in Maryland and Richmond, Virginia. Um, We are back on deck to be in Baltimore and Prince George's County. There are so many ways in which we're North Carolina is on deck. Mm. In the near future, so many wonderful places that we're going. Plus, we are taking real women on the road. So we go where where the where the call comes out. We go and and bring a real woman experience. And so the abundance of even that growth is happening in the new year. So Mm -hmm. if your intention is to grow and to connect with others in a meaningful way so that you can continue to grow in your own personal confidence and how you help others and you're a catalyst for others. Mm-hmm. We really just lovingly challenge you to check us out. Just check yeah. us out. We grow. And you, you know what I love? And we just experienced this in the last virtual sister circle that we had. Mm-hmm. When a woman comes to the circle mm-hmm. and she realizes that she hasn't been processing, she hasn't been doing a lot of the things. And then she says, Wow, this is so inspiring. This is encouraging to know that there's a space where mm-hmm. I can do this. And it's like, yes, I love to hear women say that. It's just mm-hmm. so beautiful because that's why we exist. Mm-hmm. That's why we're here to create a safe space so that we can say, girl, me too. Whatever mm-hmm. you share, somebody in the room has some type of experience with that so that you feel like you're not alone. And you have a space that you can process your stuff with. So, so, good. so yeah. good. So yeah, check us out, y'all. You know, you can like and follow and share wherever you see us. We're on social media, Real Women Rock and Real Women Rock, the number two. I'm going to the website, realwomenrock.org. 
Uh, we have exciting things coming and we just we'll we'll be sharing them here as well as on our pages. We on TikTok, girl, we on TikTok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, we, are, we are branching out. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's my word. I think um, with our accountability about what we're doing moving forward, I know you with school and Mm -hmm. Me with, with my creative juices mm -hmm. um, and then our words in place, your free spirit, yeah. my abundance. Yeah. We would love to hear what y'all's words are, what your yeah. intention is so that we can do this together moving into the new year. Yeah. Share, please. <laughs> All right. Well, that was good. We, that, that was a wonderful dive. I felt like we was kind of backstroking or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So good. Good. Oh, wait, no, wait. yeah. yeah. So I'm going to take us all the way up out the water now. <laughs> just, honestly, at the beginning of the year, I wanted to make sure we, you know, we, we set in some serious intention for the year, but I just wanted to have a little giggle child. Cause yeah. This is funny to me. And, it, you know, on some level, it's not funny, but it is. We're going to giggle for a minute. Okay. Um, Because I'm a country girl and I love a country rapper. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I love these Southern rappers. So T.I. and Tiny are a couple of my favorite entertainers. I just, you know, keep up with them. Mm -hmm. Um maybe not watch all of the reality shows and all that, but I, I really do appreciate um, Southern Southern style because I'm a Southern country girl. I know you from Florida. I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> all of it. And so um, there has been a story out in the last few weeks, a couple of months now, that they have a, a, a young man, a baby boy named King, and he was recorded starting some stuff with his daddy that led to a physical altercation. Child, if you don't know it, look it up. There's a video clip. <laughs> the clip appears to have been taken um, at the Atlanta Falcons versus the New Orleans Saints football game. Mm -hmm. um, and so King was on his live and his fans, you know, they they popping up on the video. You can see them reacting to him talking. It, it whatever whatever happened, whatever happened before the thing went on, <laughs> by the time it got on, there was this back and forth of him trying to say that, you know, he didn't he wasn't raised with a silver spoon in his mouth. And, you know, they didn't really want him around. And it was followed up with some some posts after it um, that he was saying, you know, if he was a mistake, just admit he was a mistake, like some really, you know, hurtful things. Mm -hmm. um, but the context of the squabble was him growing up kind of in poverty versus growing up with access to wealth. And he was trying to say, I didn't have access to all of that. Well, his parents was like, you wanted to keep going over your grandmama's house. You didn't want to stay with us. We yeah. wanted you to stay with us, but you didn't want to. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were saying, you know, you don't you don't have it bad compared to some of these people out here. You don't have it that bad. And he was trying to say, you know, I'm I'm from the hood. I live in the hood. I had it as bad as anybody else in the hood. Y'all did. I mean, it was just this back and forth got to the point where T.I. had to take the boy in a chokehold and <laughs> T.I. Was, was saying stuff like, boy, you can't, you ain't got nothing on me. It was a mess, a hot mess on the video. The fact that King put it up there, bless his heart. He kept saying he was standing on business. Bless his heart. He was... <laughs> And that's been the, everybody's word now. I'm standing on business. That's everybody standing on business. Hilarious. My question in our put myself in this time, it could be him or her. I don't know. You talk about Ti or Tiny or right. King, right? Putting yourself in their shoes. My question is, if you were first of all, let's just use King. Could you ever see yourself talking to your parents that way? Because he said a lot. He said a lot. And then if you are T.I., maybe, um, tiny, maybe, how would you handle experiencing your child talking to you this way? Mm -hmm. And I, I know you're child-free and happy. Go lucky, but and. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> this is what I would do. No. Mm -hmm. um, so as king, mm, so there have been moments as mm -hmm. a child where I got a little slick at the mm -hmm. mouth, not mm -hmm. to the degree right. that it sounds like he did, but I, I was a little, you know, smart mm -hmm. mouth sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, my mama crazy. So <laughs> I knew how far <laughs> to go. Mm -hmm. I would never go to those lengths, you know, and say all of those things. So no, I wouldn't have gone that far, but I have gotten a little spicy with my mom before and she mm -hmm. got me right quick. Mm -hmm. But I do think about from his perspective, it, it sounds like, you know, the counselor and me, I just can't help but think about yep. Wonder what's going on with the baby? You know, what's like it just makes with the wonder, like it, you know, it sounds like middle child something. He felt like he wasn't wanted and all this stuff. And if he was over at the grandmother's house, there's something that he didn't feel connected or something mm -hmm. was going on that is causing him to act out. Yeah. Um, so it just makes me curious about. Are you really listening? Like, I know what he's doing on the surface, but he's trying to say something. It sounds he like, yep. you know, he's seeking something and I don't, they're, they're just taking what he's given. They're matching him at his energy. Yes. And it sounds like there's something underlying that he's trying to say. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what it makes me think about. But as a parent, um, reflexes, <laughs> like, you know, my first instinct would probably to be like, who who are you talking? But <laughs> chop you in your throat, you know, or something like that. Just when somebody's going off like that, and probably later I would have to reflect and be like, okay, what's going on with my child? Mm -hmm. um, but in the moment, I think I would be in the heat of the moment, like it sounds like his father was, and and get some straightening. But it also sounds like he 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 his father's child because his yeah. father went through you know some things as well. So he may yeah. be the that is going through a similar uh, path that his father went down. So, you know, um, yeah, but as a parent, I probably in the moment would have got a little straightening and then we talk about it later. So, yeah, 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 it's tough. yeah, that makes sense, girl. <clears throat> so I have I have fixed my face the wrong way mm -hmm. and gotten slapped in the mouth because I fixed my face. <laughs> Mm -mm, mm -mm. I remember we were, I was in a choir rehearsal one time and mm -hmm. somebody other than my mama tried to tell me what to do. Mm -mm. And my face said, you ain't my mama. Mm -mm. But my mama was there <laughs> and she saw my face uh -oh. that said, and I didn't even say it. I just yeah. looked like, yeah. like, I know it. you're not talking to me. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I don't know where she came from. I don't know mm -hmm. where she came from. It's just a hand came and slapped me in the mouth. And I looked, and it was my mama. Fix your face. Oh, the fact that you didn't even say anything. Child, fix your face. I said, what? I remember the, the lady's name was Miss Joyce who told me what to do because I knew from now on when Miss Joyce tell me do something, I better do it. <laughs> that'll never happen again. Mm -mm. Um, and I think, as as you said, I think one time my mother asked my honest opinion about something. Mm -hmm. And I said something to her in my teenage years that I would have never said mm. if she hadn't given me the freedom to say it. Okay. Um, she, she asked me and I told her. And mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing pretty to hear, but I told her. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, if I were king, I just can't imagine doing mm -hmm. that. Um, and I'm thinking, what, and I don't know what it's like to take that type of wealth for granted. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know how much he experienced or what he chose to not be a part of or whatever, but I know his family is well to do. Right. Absolutely, yeah. So I don't, I don't know what it's like to take that level for granted. Mm -hmm. I just can't imagine taking yeah. that level. of. <laughs> I can't imagine. I, I just, yeah. I just be really grateful all the time. <laughs> 
you were battling against something. something. Yeah, bless his heart. Mm-hmm. Um, so because all of what because of that, all that you said, I think is really true. Like we really don't know all he has experienced because right. if he truly chose to be at his grandmother's house and his grandmother's house wasn't the silver spoon house mm-hmm. he probably experienced some crap over there not not necessarily at his grandmother's but just being quote unquote his, his description in the hood exactly. he probably experienced some hood stuff right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so between that and then whatever mommy and daddy issues all of us end up with no matter what <laughs> you know we all end up with some level of mm-hmm. mama daddy something mm-hmm. um, I, I'm praying for him and I can understand that there's probably, I know if I need a counselor, mm-hmm. baby King probably need a counselor. <laughs> oh, bless his little heart. Yeah. yeah, probably need a counselor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if I were his parents, um, let me tell you, social media is the devil. It he is. would not have been that phone, I wouldn't even, we wouldn't even be talking no more until right. that phone was off. Right. right like, right. Mm-mm, give me your phone. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not, we're not having this conversation. T, I, I got a bodyguard. Go get his phone. Like, yeah. I, you know, I'm not even. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. You can't be him. Get, get yeah. the phone. Get the phone. Because we're not doing this on social right. media. I don't care mm-hmm. what personality I am. We're not doing this. So mm-hmm. I think for me, it's the having to deal with all of it so publicly as a parent yeah. is challenging. That's a lot. Um, and I, I just wouldn't do it. I would, I would, mm-hmm. I would not do it publicly. And then, you know, there are times that it goes back to, we talked about Kirk Franklin, some episodes mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. when he was being recorded by one of his sons and didn't even yeah. know it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't believe that there's perfection in me as a parent at all. <laughs> I believe I will hem you up and right. you know regrets the level at which I did it possibly later. Yeah. Um, but but I do think I think that social media is the devil. <laughs> the fact that mm-hmm. baby my son jokes about it because he never but um, but he does joke, you know, they have the whole, I'm gonna call CPS or, you know, all of that, those jokes are hilarious. Um, when they're, when they are just jokes, yeah, right? Yeah. We mm-hmm. are just jokes. Um, but all of, we are in that, that, what is this, that, that season, that, yeah, that yeah. environment yeah. where everything yeah. is out here and, and mm-hmm. publicly accessible. So yeah, yeah. it's not easy. You know what's funny? I just thought about something right quick. When you said uh, your son jokes about calling CPS, I mm-hmm. remember one time my mom was looking for me and I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And I ended mm-hmm. up being at my girlfriend's house across the street. And she finally, mm-hmm. got the police just happened to be riding by. She hit me. She was hitting me in front of the police. She said, <laughs> This my child. I said, This lady is crazy. This lady is crazy. <laughs> she don't care. <laughs> And the police said, do they was like, ma'am, you know, you just don't be hitting her outside. Uh-huh. Is true. <laughs> nah, you you hit somebody today. Right. Was, it's totally yeah. different. Totally yeah. Different. yeah That'll probably that. that would be a good topic too. Corporal, how do we feel about you know beatings and whippings? We can talk uh, yeah. about that at some point. Because mm-hmm. you know, there's some some pros and some definite cons to that. Yeah. We can I think that's a deep dive coming up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. This was good. This was good. This was an interesting one. It was. Yeah. 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 I appreciate this. If you had to say from this one, <clears throat> kind of what would be a nugget you take away, or even just in general, what comes to mind mm-hmm. as a nugget? What comes up for you? I would say you get to curate this year. Mm-hmm. You get to be the creator of your experiences. You are a powerful being. There is so much power in what your words say, your, your, the power in your words and the actions that flow behind that. So know that about yourself and know that this year can be whatever you say you want mm, it to be. Mm, mm, 
Mm. Period. Mm. Period. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm stopping there. The, literally, <laughs> these words. This year mm-hmm. can be whatever you say. Mm-hmm. Yep. Period. And it is so. Mm-hmm. Listen, y'all. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New so Year about what this year holds for each of you and for us. We are so looking forward to this journey. I'm so excited for all of the episodes from here moving forward into this new year, what we have in store for you all and what we get to do together. I love you, sister. I love you too. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank y'all so much. Follow, like, share. Uh, Make sure you share this with somebody else. We appreciate you. Happy New Year. See you later. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.